of howling and laughter in movies on my cousin Benny um, the director had been around his material for so long I mean we, we filmed it down in Georgia and we brought it back down to Hollywood we worked on his director's cut we got for, well before the director's cut we got to a first cut editor's assembly and then we and then we worked it through the director's cut and we we didn't screen the first guy assembly as I recall it just he saw it but you know but it was every scene and it was it was like you know it was four hours long and it was like you know it was and it needed to be like really trimmed especially for a comedy so we worked through his 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 director's cut and then we like and we screened it just ourselves you know in a, the the studio screening room and and the editing crew, I was like just on the floor. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, we were all just laughing our ass off. It was just so fucking funny, even though we had been around it for a little while. But to see it in continuity and to see it all working, and we had tamped some music and stuff onto it and whatnot, but not even that much. There wasn't like, you know, like we had put like maybe you know some special effects for the owl, you know, the animal sound or the whistle that like disturbs them at night and all that stuff. But when the when the when the lights came up, he was angry, and we were like we're going what? And he goes, "This is you can't fool me like that." He goes, "You know, like you, you know, I feel like you were just laughing inauthentically." Who, who said this? <laughs> who said this? The, the director. Oh, yeah. He thought you were. He thought you were fake. We thought we were. We thought we were. We were. We were. We were phonies. Oh, and that we were, and that we were like laughing, like just like just to make him feel good somehow. And uh, and we went. You don't you don't know how many bad movies we've worked on. You know, over the course of our lives, you can't laugh like that if something isn't funny. I mean, try as you might, you can't actually like you know your side yeah. doesn't hurt from it being funny like like this movie is. This is funny, you know. And and he didn't believe us until we went to the we the we finished off his his director's cut and we went to our first preview. And the audience was even more than we were. They were howling with laughter, right. just like you're talking about. I mean, like you know, uh, like knee slappers. You know, you could hear them. Like you know, in a, in a you know drama, you don't always know when you go to a preview and how well it's going. But a, a comedy, you do. Oh yeah. Either they're either they're laughing or they're not laughing. And, right. You know, either the comedy is working or it's dead. So I mean, this thing was so live. I mean, it's just like it was magic, you know. And and every we, we didn't even do that many previews because every one that we went was like that. But he was a believer after after seeing it with a live audience. But it was the it was the funniest thing that he thought that we were we were we were just you know, <laughs> yeah, authentically laughing. I guess it's one of those things where he, you know, he he must have thought. He heard the lines too many times. Yeah. It wasn't funny anymore. Yes, exactly. It was like, you know, it was right. just, it was just, it was just weird. He was, he was finding like fault in things that were perfect. Yeah. So it was, and, you know, it's. He was he was a, he was quite a good director, Jonathan Lennon. I, mean, I, I shouldn't really, you know, I, I feel like I'm telling that story out of school somewhat, but but it was true. It was just a, it was just this terribly awkward moment because I thought he was going to fire all of us, you know, for for laughing, you know, <laughs> at a comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was he was he was really angry. So <laughs> and well, calm down, but he still didn't quite believe us until he got to the first preview with a live audience, and then he, then he was a believer again and then you know he like rediscovered his work it was it was a strange process you know to see that you know where, where you could actually after having struggled all the way through right you know the writing and and the pre-production and the actual production on set right. and then getting it back to the editing room that by that time months and months and months and probably maybe a year or two of being with that material it had, it had, it had, it had worn itself thin in his yes. mind yes for sure well, it's the same thing with telling jokes. Like after telling jokes so many times, I remember telling a guy, um, I'm so sick of this bit, but it's a killer bit. Yeah. And he, I'm just sick of it. And he goes, don't worry about it. He goes, if it's a killer bit, 
leave it alone. I go, it doesn't feel funny. And he goes, yeah, but you're an idiot. He goes, just do the bit the way you've been doing it. Yeah. Don't change anything. Don't just do it. It's good the way it is. And it, yes, it gets to the point where you've done it so many times that, um, yeah, you just, it loses its, you feel like it loses its luster. It's life. Yeah, yeah. it's not, it's lifeless. Yes. Yeah, I, I never really seen that up close like that till that moment. And I sort of <laughs> understood that. But you, I mean, you and you being, you know, a stand up in comedy and all that would know that much more than I did. But, but it was, I, I never really seen someone who had like, who had like lost the belief in their, in but their this, material this, like that. This is, this is what happens when you do it to an audience, just say you do it to an audience that sometimes you do play these shitholes out in the middle of nowhere and they're, they're terrible. And you do, you, you, you're there for two weeks and you, so you do your bit and you're thinking, this is terrible. What the hell's going on here? And then you hit a, a, a normal bar, normal place, and people are howling. People are going, this is fantastic. This is great. And it, all of a sudden it, it, it hits you. You're like, all right. I, I, it, it makes you feel like, all right, good. Because I, I, you start questioning yourself. Yeah, yeah. My, my hats off to any performer. I got to tell you, you know, it's that's the, the toughest work there is. I mean, I did some improv and I, I did a few character bits and, and some things, but I'm just saying, you know, being out is nothing's lonelier than being on a stage where it's not working. You know, like, you know, like, you know yeah. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stephen, it could be, uh, uh, I remember a guy telling me, an older uh, comic when I was starting off, and he said something to me, and I go, because you always want to hit them hard. You always want to, you know, always want to hit them hard. And they just, it just sucks shit. And um, he said, listen, when, you, when that happens, it's called reading the phone book, okay? You just go up there and do your, just do your set. Don't worry about it. You got to do your, you know, if you're doing half hour or 45 minutes, depending on where you are in the order, do the time. Because if you don't, you don't get paid. Yeah. So just do your time. Okay. And don't worry about it. If they don't laugh, don't worry about it. And it can be 45 minutes of it's not fun. And yeah, you, I'm sure you, there's a lot of soul searching that goes on. When oh, yeah. You, 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 uh, quit smoking uh the week before and then you start up again you know and now you know you're you're you, you know if anybody had any coke you'd be sitting there going if there's anybody got any coke and yeah. can get me <laughs> give it to me now <laughs> yeah get this crap out of my mind and put me on a cloud somewhere uh please because yeah sometimes yeah it could it could be sticker shock where all of a sudden it just hits you where you're going no matter what you do i mean i, I played a corporate for a christmas party Stephen. And they just stared at me. They were just, they, it was after dinner. They've drunk, they've drinking. They, they bring me on at 11 o'clock. It's, you know, they don't want to see a comic now. They just want to talk to their friends. They want to, and you know that, but you're paid to be there. So you feel like this pinata, you know, and, you know, so it, yeah, it, 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 it anyways, you have to have a strong soul. I, I mean, like you know, to keep going in that. It's 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 it's, uh, it's very tough. Yeah. And I really do. I I I I understand why you know actors go around the bend and and whatever because I'm just saying it's 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 uh you know you just it's day to day sometimes it's just, you don't know because there really is a look at that example of 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 Austin Powers and being in a you know in a theater with with people that had no cultural reference to what was being comedically parodied you know yeah. it's just deadly I mean, it was, you know and it's and, and there's the audience that can be like that yeah and it to me it's always do you think that um like he was very lucky that he took it to someplace else um because it could have destroyed his career right then and there if they yeah, just he was, he was very was, lucky that demi moore had money in it yes <laughs> yes but that's yeah. what i mean there's all these little things that a lot of people don't know 
some of it's luck, some of it's, you know, when I look at you and I look at your body of work, there's no luck, Stephen. It's oh, all. Yes, there is. No, there's, no, there's, no, no, no. There's, no. If you're there's, in, plenty, there's plenty of hard work, but there's there's a lot of luck. I mean, well, look, I, I had unlucky. I think things. I think you made your own luck. To some extent, but there were unlucky things that I did too, like turning down terms of endearment. You know, I mean, that for a time, I like I stayed on Hot Dog the movie because I had promised, you know, the guy that I was working with who had just come to town that I was gonna like watch his back, and and I got an offer to like leave and go somewhere else, and the thing turned out to be this big, you know, Academy Award hit, and and my friend that I gave the job to, his 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 career took off. I'm just saying, so you know, it's choices. I mean, it's yeah. There's there's luck involved. There's there's some people like you know are willing to like step out of their responsibility and go for go for the brass ring when the when the when when it, when it comes by you. And other people who are just going to be true to their word and slog through it. You, you never know. You know, it's just it's it's just hard to say. It's okay. uh, it's a mercurial thing. Yes uh but uh pro promise we'll do another one of these okay please because it, 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 we've just covered just a little it's like an iceberg and we just hit the tip so and he's got a million and one stories i know he does um that are gonna be killer I, wonderful uh person uh for doing this um and being so open um you don't get that you, you really don't in this day and age um Maybe he doesn't care anymore. Who knows? But, no, uh, I care. But but you know, I mean, it's fun. I mean, it's like you know, I I'm actually a pretty private person. I don't I don't really enjoy sharing it that much. But but you know, you 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 were very persistent, and yes, I, uh, am. I, I, I hats off to you. And yeah, you caught me in a weak moment. <laughs> Look, I think I had too much to drink for the holidays, and uh, there we have it. That's, you know, a lot of people say to me, they go, how do you get these interviews with these guys? And it's very simple. Just keep bugging them. Keep bugging them. And once they realize that you actually do care about their work and you love to hear their stories, they kind of enjoy talking to you. You know, just well, it's, keep... a it's a gift to be able to do that, though. I mean, you know, like not everybody is enjoyable to talk to and well, I you know, appreciate you have to... it. but but to me, I love movies, yes. right? I mean, if we're talking about uh you know uh air conditioners, this would be a very short conversation. Exactly. I you know, I love movies. I love the business that you're in, and um I I love the movies that you've worked on and the stories are beautiful and i know you're not lying that's the thing oh no I, I love movies too that that's that's the reason i did it that's and that's why it was kind of running away and joining the circus it was never motivated by for me to i don't know to make money or or i don't know what you know i didn't i didn't set out with any objective like that other than i was just fascinated by the the entire process of movies and i guess there, there's nothing that that quite beats like seeing a movie you know, for the first time that you know nothing about and you're just in a theater with with an audience and suddenly it just sweeps you away. I mean, um, you, like, I, like I said with Lawrence of Arabia when I was a little kid or, or, or train spotting, I was, I was in Cannes Film Festival one year and I just ended up having tickets to this thing. And I sort of noticed that everybody was like English and Scottish. It was mostly like around in the audience, but I, I knew nothing about that movie. And, uh, and suddenly it, like, it played and I was just going, wow, that is so good. That is just yeah. so surprising. It was so like fascinating to watch and really like grabbed me. And you know, you can't duplicate an experience like that. I mean, I guess first love, that kind of thing is similar to that, but you know, you don't need the commitment with a, with a movie. Yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. do with a girl. So yeah. it's like, you know, it's, it's, uh, but you know, it, it does, it just gives you, it makes you feel alive again, you know, to like be stimulated in that sort of way you know that, that you see something that just takes you away emotionally and not just you but you know that like all these strangers that are around you are going through the same journey i think that's what that's what bothers me about theaters and that will i want to talk about that in more detail but when you go into a theater to me it felt like you and your group it didn't matter what color you were it didn't matter who you 
who, who was sitting over here, you were, it, it didn't matter. You were there to see a movie you were on a journey. If it was a good movie, yeah. you're on this really good journey together. And when the lights came up, everybody looked, you know, you just smile at each other. Yeah, yeah, you walk out in the days and every, yeah. just tell you that everyone's got this sort of smile on their face. Yeah. They're it's, going back to their lives, but, you know, for, for like, you know, an hour or two of magic, you, you were that, transported Stephen, that's to the thing that, else. Yes, and that's the thing that the business that you're in, see, 90, over 90% 90 of people have a job that they hate. They go to work to a job that sucks and they just do it just to, so their lights stay on or, you know, you know, you need money to survive. You know, this isn't Star Trek where, you know, everybody's all happy, but you're in a business that takes you away just for that time and makes you think that you're on that journey with them. You're with Indiana Jones. You're with uh, Lawrence of, yeah. of Arabia when you're in that charge. You know, you're 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 taken away uh, to this place that you, you 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 at night when you close your eyes you you go there. That's the magic of the movies. Exactly. That's, that's why people love it. I'm just yes. saying it's it's a it's a human transformative experience. And you know, and it's not exactly the same when you're when you're when you're gluing all the parts together. But you know, even after you do that and you see it again, even if you've toiled on it for six months and and say maybe it was a you know there wasn't always pleasant inside the room or there were you know there were political things or you know or that yeah, went yeah. on that, that that you know that were abusive, yet somehow when you see it as an end result even with all that stuff in you know that you're holding inside you you still get pulled away by it you know and yeah. that's what's so amazing because yeah. just it is a it, it, when the flicker or whatever it just takes you to a time and a place that's somewhere else yeah that's that's the beauty that's, that's the, the beauty, beauty of it yeah that's what makes yeah. it an art that's, that's what makes why it so many thing. people i know it's a lot of channels youtube channels that will uh you know they'll either shit on a movie or whatever and and to me i don't mind watching those but it's after a while it gets so negative that i don't want to i don't i'm not into it anymore you know yeah it's no i i i do know i i mean i had a, i had a close friend who was a who was a music critic i remember uh, one time we were i don't know like uh, in the hollywood bowl it was like the uh, nuclear survival uh, rally or whatever and they had you know just like everybody that was there jackson brown and all kinds of people and i was so looking forward to going and we had backstage passes to see the whole thing because he was he was working for uh the one of the magazines it wasn't rolling stone what was he on the uh the the, the trade paper I, I forgot the name of it now um but uh he got there and, and we were like kind of at the at the craft service table while like you know while while uh jackson brown was playing and uh and he said there isn't any lobster here and i said what <laughs> i said they have no lobster and i said so it's like nuclear survival sunday or whatever it is we're like backstage with like you know all you gary us bonds and all these incredible you know performers you know and they're playing like right there in front of us come on right. this is like you know how, how good can this get this is like one of the biggest perks of your job yeah goes, i'm leaving i want to have like a real dinner <laughs> <laughs> And he left me there. <laughs> he actually just, he split. And I went, I can't believe that you did this. You know, I told him later, I just said, that is so, I can't believe that you like have like fallen to this level. You know, it's... Stephen, I went out with this girl and I had to stop. Like, like I, I remember in the middle of the conversation, because all we ever did is complain. Like just complain, and it was like she would just complain about everything, and then I would I would have to sit there and complain about something, and complain about this, complain about the food, complain about the you know, the sun's out, complain about the, and I just thought, this is stupid. Just enjoy the sandwich, man. Just 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 enjoy. Like I I I tell kids, like when I do um, 
you know, magic for kids or whatever. And people go, how do you do magic for kids? And I go, they're the best audiences in the oh, world. Yeah, it's a blessing. They, they, they are, they laugh their brains out. They, yeah. they tell you how, and I always tell them, um, enjoy kid, enjoy, enjoy what you're doing right now. Please enjoy everything. Enjoy. Don't let the world, don't let things bring you down. Don't you know, let the world change you. Remember yeah, don't. That. You know, like that's 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 something that, and that's the beauty of a, a good movie. It, it it you know, if I'm feeling like shit, I'll watch Columbo or I'll watch Goonies or I'll watch whatever, and it just brings me to that place when I was 15 years old and I saw that for the first time, and just when I just thought, it's it, you know, you're optimistic about the world and you don't have to, you know, if you turn on the news now, you're you're terrified. You really are. You, every second, this, that, the other thing, you know, this country's going to blow up this country or, you know. You, I haven't left my house in two years. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 kidding. I, but, it, you know, but practically it, it's, it, they do that to you. You know, they, yes. they can make you afraid to, to do anything. Yes. And that's no good. No. It's no good on the mind. No. Okay. And, terrible and, on the mind. And, and, and yeah, it's, 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 you know, and I've, I've, I've suffered from uh, uh, mental, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Mental uh, stress. Uh, you know you what know I mean? What, you, know what, you know what kept me from that? You know, it's a strange thing, but, you know, when I was a kid, my, my I came across these letters that my dad had sent from the Pacific during the war to his parents. And they were almost completely redacted. You know, it was like they, he had, you know, these things took months to come across the Pacific. And he went, I, you know, dear mom and dad, I'm writing you from somewhere in the Pacific again. I can't say where, but just want you to know. And then blank, 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 blank in the end. But all my love, I'll be home soon. And, you know, he spent like three or four years fighting from island to island in the Pacific and yeah. every once in a while writing, you know, back to his parents who had no idea what happened or if they were ever going to see him alive again. Yeah. And, you know, and I kind of think, you know, some of my problems are kind of small compared yeah. to that. Yes. Yes. You know, it's just like those people were tough. Yeah. You know, that's some real hard living yes you know? so you know sometimes I, I conjure that up when i'm feeling like sorry for myself and and, and dragging down and i kind of go you know what that was uh there's people that go through like lots of things that are just much more difficult than this yeah. and you just got to take it in perspective but but i understand i mean you know it's easy it's easy to be depressed in this business because you know there's you know, this, there's there's a lot more valleys than there are peaks in many ways, and you know, not every movie is a, is a hit by, by by any means. And there's yeah, but, few things that are more terrible than knowing that you're really working on a bad movie, like you know, and you and there's months to go on it yet. And I've literally been with directors and people that are cracking up as that happens and becoming like they've returned to becoming the alcoholic that they hadn't been for the last 20 years because they know this thing's going to crush their career oh, and you yeah. still have to finish the movie but you know but it just gets worse every day that you're there right. and it's and you know but you gotta like find you gotta pull something out of it you know like yeah sometimes we do just keep moving ahead to keep the lights on you know but i mean luckily those are few and far between for me yeah, but Stephen, it's just, it, to me, it's, it's, you have a, <laughs> I think you found your passion a long, long time ago. And, and that is beautiful. If you could do that, I tell that to my son, I say you and my daughter, I go, you gotta find something you love. Okay. And if you do that, amen, you wake up every morning happy. And that's something that you gotta look back. And I'm not trying to kiss your ass. I'm just telling you the truth. You've done something that very, 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 very few people have done. And you should be incredibly proud of that because there's a lot of people that are incredibly jealous that, that you've done all these things. And it's great that you've done that, okay? Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm held back by the things that I didn't accomplish in that sort of way. But I, I understand what you're saying. My, my mind teacher way back in the 70s, Rich, Richmond Shepherd, 
who was a fabulous mime, had a saying that he said at the beginning of class when we did improv, every, every time we went there, he said, just remember, many are called, few are chosen. Remember that. And, and, you know, and, and there were a lot of people that, you know, that fell out, you know, that, you know, started in that class and ended up being grocery store clerks and other things. And I did manage to keep going. So, you know, surviving is an accomplishment, you know, no matter what level it, it, it occurs. And I, I am proud of some of those things, but, you know, there's, well, we can get into it in the next session. I mean, there's other things where, you know, that were just, you know, that are also soul crushing where, you know, like, you know, someone just hates you for no reason and yeah. prevents you from getting jobs, you know, just because somehow like, you know, you were the wrong person at the wrong place at the wrong time and they need to blame you for that because they suffered from some, you know, something that hurt their prestige or their power. <laughs> yeah, they're taking you know. it out on you. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, I, I had a, I had a, I had a mate, uh, head of a studio who 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 practically drove me out of writing. You know, I mean, I mean, he literally would call people after I went to like you know pitch something or whatever and tell him never hire that guy. You know, he did this to me, and and he was a powerful person, and he made it his business for some reason to hate me, and I, you know, and it was. It was it was just inconsequential, really, to 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 him. <laughs> or it should have been. You see, people like this is the thing when you look at it, you think this guy's had it, he's had it made. No, everybody, you know, everybody, everybody gets those. You know, some idiot will 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 bring you down or try. That happens to everybody, in whatever business you're in, um, and that sucks. That, that really sucks. Yeah, but you just got to keep going. I mean, that's, I mean, hopefully, I mean, you got to like, you, you know, your luck can turn and you just keep moving forward. You find another, another film, another movie, another story, whatever it is that keeps you going. Um, I guess I would, I'll, I'll say, yeah, I was lucky enough to keep getting work. That's, and I, but I think you're also right in that part of it was my work ethic and my, my level of enthusiasm because yeah. I did, I did love most of the stuff that we were doing and I would, I would pay people to do that, you know, as opposed to the other way around. And when it first started, in fact, that's more or less what I was doing, you know, through free labor and, and that sort of thing. It was, a, it was, yeah. It was something that I that I loved, and I st I still do love it. I mean, I you know I, everybody's got their issues, but you show me a great show me a great movie, and uh, I get yeah you know, I I saw Dune the other the other day. I, I hadn't been out to a lot of theaters, but they had a screening at the DGA one, which is this huge screen with like a great sound system, and and you know it had been a few weeks that it had been out already, and it was over the Thanksgiving holiday, so it wasn't like heavily attended. Um, so I didn't have to like worry, even though I had to wear a mask and show them that I was vaccinated, but I didn't have to sit there the whole time and worry about catching COVID right. you know, while, I was, while I was watching the movie. So I just let the movie like take me and I went, you know, I really, and I really liked it, you know, and I, my only problem with it was it ended, you know, and I went, why, you know, you can't show Lawrence of Arabia in part one and part two, they yeah. had like an intermission and then you'd see the end of it. I mean, yeah. it was to me to have like to cut that in half and like, OK, I, I could have stayed for another if they had an intermission, I could have stayed for another hour, two hours to see the whole thing as a one experience, you know, yeah. I mean, and like they did with Lord of the Rings pretty much in the live action. And it was worth it. It would have been worth it. I don't know whether they couldn't do that because of budget reasons or people's schedules, however it worked. But yeah, that was the only disappointment for me. Like, it, like, can the lights went and I went. No, you're just we're just down the desert now. What about the rest of the story? Yes. We're not gonna yes. see that. Yes, I've been there. And now yeah. yeah. Or I want to talk to you about that next time about um that in itself and also a remix about what do you think about remakes about um just this is just something I want you to um like they want to remake um uh one of my favorite movies. The I've Star watched. is Born. How many times has that been? Yeah, how many, uh, yeah, like how many but, times? But, you know, but you know, you put the right two people in the thing and it's like, it's a perennial, you know, like the last generation doesn't remember that it was ever made before. It's I, new. I watch uh, Princess Bride with my daughter every year 
and uh, they want to do a remake and i'm like no just yeah i, I, don't, I don't yeah i know i, I have the same it. kind of instant antipathy to that process <laughs> but strangely enough i'm having worked on a few i gotta say that sometimes sometimes they do work at their own time and space with this new generation of actors or whatever it's 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 usually a bad idea but not a, but not always that's what i want to talk to you next time about is has hollywood um have like there's so many remakes have they run out of uh, that's the, that's the intellectual property thing i was talking about okay. they they they've run out they haven't run out of original ideas they're afraid of original ideas oh well, i guess shakespeare would say that nothing is an original idea it's all like mold that you know they're, you know just it's a thematically slightly altered. It's just like there's only so many ideas, like going back to Greek tragedy and all that stuff. But you know, but what I'm just saying is that they they don't like something that just comes to them as they don't respect original screenplay as much anymore. They are afraid of them because they don't have any kind of validity already there to them. And, po and probably because of the whole copyright issues with the Writers Guild and all that about, you know, in Europe, you know, they, they withhold money and still like give you royalties on your film because you never lose the copyright. But when you sell it here, it's no longer copyrighted to you. And, and consequently, you're treated like that. But the novelist never loses his copyright. Now it's just adapted from the novel. So they respect them. So, but that's what they want. They want, you know, so many people already bought the magazine. So many people already bought the novel. The movies already was made once and it was a hit twice. You know, it's uh, it was a it was a television show from the '60s. You know, it's that's what they need, partially because the money has become such a, a burden. I mean, the um, and marketing has something that we can talk about that next time too. I haven't seen the inside of that. I mean, the amount of money that's spent on marketing these things globally is is huge, and that has driven up budgets, you know, considerably. So that the risk taking aspect is gone in a lot of the. Uh, but you know, it's changing now because it's like a you know, five hundred channel universe, and it, most of it's Drek. But, 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 you know, but there are a lot of like, you know, opportunities out there for smaller pictures, I would say, because now they're just streaming venues, you know, they don't want to spend more than a couple million dollars on them. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I don't see a lot of them look really interesting. I was just flipping through something the other day and I went, do you want to see that? No. Do you yeah, want me to too. That? No. Yeah. Do you want to see that? No. no. There's, there's nothing appealing about it to me. You know, I, I mean, I don't want to see it, even even if it's like part of my subscription. I yeah. still don't want to see it. I know. My it's just like, like rather, I'd rather look at birds playing outdoors. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, my wife's like, do you really need Netflix? And I'm like, it's kind of like a drug. I'm like, I, yeah. I, I, you know, like there's nothing really on it, but Let's not get rid of it just yet. Maybe, maybe there might be something, you know. I think the episodics hook people a lot. You know, that's the, and that's another thing that I've never been truly enamored of is I've never had the time, I guess, to really devote to episodic television. I mean, I love the scene, like you know, I mean, from Seinfeld to the Sopranos. I mean, there's some very good ones. But I never had time to watch them all, so I just enjoyed like individual episodes of them. But I, but I, but I never have the full resonance that they bring along that you know their fans seem to like enjoy, where they just know every little detail and minutiae of of every character. It's, it's just um, the the thing that bad about the streaming services is see before when you could watch Seinfeld, you 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 had to wait a week, yeah, to see. Yeah, that created expectations. Yeah, so you you were you were waiting. You know, you were like, I can't wait. You know, it's going to be a Thursday night. I can't wait for this. And now, uh, now you can watch a whole season. I'll watch yeah. Cobra, when Cobra Kai comes out. I'll watch the whole thing from beginning to end. Um, and and and. Uh, that, well, binge that, watching, binge watching is, is is a new phenomenon. I mean, yeah, and it just to me, it's it's an addictive thing that uh, uh, I think it takes away from looking forward to. Hey, just give it a couple of days. 
but it's right there. You know what I mean, Stephen? It's right there. I understand it a little bit though, because I mean, I have sort of in my life have had similar things with like a really great novel, like like say a Taipan or something like that. You know, like James Clavell like did that magic for me. I mean, once I started reading those, I couldn't sleep for days. I just like, I'd like to have a break and eat a sandwich and get back to it. Or I could, you know, if I unfortunately picked up on, on vacation, I would be in Tahiti, you know, like my ex or something would be saying, well, we're like, why aren't we like diving or whatever? I go, I got to finish. I got to finish my you know, I just want to sit in the hammock here and read this, you know? Yeah, but that's cool though. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, well, it's, you know, so I, I, I kind of understand where people can can just be taken by the whole experience of binge, binge watching. I, I just, you know, I just, I just don't personally like to watch that much stuff on a screen if I don't have to, because I've seen so much, so much of my life has like been spent watching screens, you know? Yeah, that, but that's, that is something that, man, that is wicked. That is absolutely wicked. Okay, let's all right, go. You, you've been a joy. Thank um, you, too. Folks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to do uh, another one with Stephen because he's got so much more. Stephen, I want to say thank you. So, like, thank you for giving me the the opportunity to interview you. I know it was a pain in the ass, constantly bugging you, but I had to. Do you understand? It's cool. It's cool. I, I, it worked. Thank you so much. And you know, it was and it was worth it. Good. I I'm enjoyed blessed. myself too. No, you're you're very engaging, and and, and 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 I enjoyed talking with you. Thank you. That means so much to me. Honestly, that means the world to me. Okay. You're a joy to talk to. And I love the stories. And I really, um, I'm looking forward to the uh, uh, part one. Uh, this is, we're going to, part two is going to be even better, folks. I guarantee it. So please like, subscribe. And please, if you have questions on the comments, ask away. And if they're not dirty or stupid, I will ask Stephen. Okay. Problem. Well, we can even take dirty, but just not stupid. Yeah, we would take dirty, but not stupid. Okay, we, we're, we'll we work it out. Okay. Thank you so much, Stephen. You're the best. Okay. Be soon. Be safe and have a great weekend. Have a, have a great Thank Christmas. You, pal. You're the best. Thank you.